Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on Current Sense amplifiers. My name is Mubina Tewa, and I'm a product marketing engineer in the Current and Position Sensing product line. In this video, I will go over how to program TI's digital power monitors for direct load current and power consumption readings. Digital power monitors are current sensing devices that measure both shunt voltage and bus voltage. A programmable calibration register combined with an internal multiplier also enables direct readouts of load current and power consumption. The block diagram here shows the INA233 as an example. This device also comes with a power accumulator for energy and average power monitoring. Some power monitors may not have all the registers that are shown here, and some may not have a separate VBUS pin, but instead will monitor bus voltage at the N minus pin of the device. Please note the slight differences and refer to the individual data sheets for device specific information. Let's take a closer look at the register structure of the digital power monitors. The shunt voltage, bus voltage, current, and power registers are all read only registers, while a calibration register is a read slash write register. There is no programming needed if you only require shunt and bus voltage measurements and do not need direct current and power readouts. If direct current and power readings are required, then the calibration register must be programmed. The current register is obtained by multiplying the contents of the shunt voltage register and the calibration register, then dividing by a constant for scaling purposes. The power register is obtained by multiplying the contents of the current register and the bus voltage register contents, then by also scaling by a constant. In some devices, the bus voltage register bits are not right aligned. In order to compute the value of the bus voltage, the bus voltage register contents must be shifted right by a few bits. Please refer to the register information section of the data sheet for device specific information. Now let's get started on the steps to configure these devices for current and power readings. We need to know two parameters from the application, maximum expected current or IMAX and shunt resistor value or R shunt. When selecting the shunt resistor value, we should keep in mind the maximum allowable input voltage range of the device. Here is a snapshot of the INA233 datasheet that shows the vSense maximum and minimum limit. There are a few additional considerations in selecting an appropriate shunt resistor, which is covered in another video in this series. Once we know the maximum expected current and shunt resistor value, programming the device is a simple two-step process. Step one is to compute the minimum current least significant bit or LSB for the application. This is calculated as the maximum expected current divided by two to the power of n, where n is the resolution of the current register in number of bits. It is common to select a current LSB to be a round number larger than the minimum current LSB value to simplify the calculation. Next, the power LSB is calculated as the current LSB times a scalar a where A is a constant specific to the digital power monitor device. Step two is to compute the calibration register value, or CAL. It is equal to a constant B divided by the product of the current LSB and shunt resistor value as shown in this equation. Here, B is an internal fixed value used to ensure correct scaling. Once this calculated calibration value is written to the calibration register, we are ready to start reading the registers for current and power. Please refer to the data sheet for a particular digital power monitor to find out what the constants N, A, and B are for that device. For example, in the INA233, N is equal to 15, A is equal to 25, and B is equal to 0.00512. Once the calibration register is successfully written, the current and power registers can be read after conversion. Shunt and bus voltage registers have fixed LSVs. Once the registers are read, the adjusted decimal values of the readings multiplied by their LSVs 
will produce the real voltages measured. When reading from the current and power registers, use the computed current and power LSBs per our discussion on the previous slide to get readings in amperes and watts respectively. It should be noted that in some data sheets, such as the INA233, telemetry data conversion equations are provided alongside the coefficients m, b, and r for current, voltage, and power respectively. These two formats are equivalent. Either can be used and they produce identical results. Expected current and power register readings can be computed using the equations shown here at the bottom of the screen. The current register value is obtained by multiplying the shunt voltage register value by the calibration register value and it is divided by a constant C. For the power register, multiply the current register value by the bus voltage register value and divide by another constant D. Please refer to the data sheet to find out the values for C and D shown in these equations. Alternatively, the same results can be reached with a telemetry data formula found in some data sheets. Keep in mind that these calculations are not required, but they can be useful to help predict register values for a given application. Let's work through an example to apply what we've discussed so far, using the INA233 as the digital power monitor of choice. Let's say that the maximum expected current for this application is plus or minus 30 amps. The bus voltage is 12 volts and the shunt resistor chosen is 2.5 milliohms to generate a maximum V-sense of plus or minus 75 millivolts. Using the max expected current of 30 amps, we arrive at the minimum current LSV value of 915 microamps. Let's round up and choose 1 milliamp per bit as the current LSB. The next step is to calculate the calibration register value. After we substitute in the current LSB of 1 milliamp and the shunt resistor value of 2.5 milliohms, we get the calibration value of 2048 in decimal. This table shows the register readings for INA 233 when a nominal load of 20 amps is flowing through the shunt resistor. It should be noted that least significant byte is sent first and the most significant byte next. Shown in this table, the column register value are after adjustment with this ordering taken into account. Not all power monitors follow this protocol. Please refer to the individual device data sheets for details. The shunt voltage register reads 20,000 in decimal. And when multiplied by the fixed shunt voltage LSB of 2.5 microvolts yields 50 millivolts. This is what we expected for a 20 amp current running through a 2.5 milliohm shunt. The bus voltage register reads 9600 in decimal, and when multiplied by the fixed bus voltage LSV of 1.25 millivolts yields 12 volts. The current register reads 20,000 in decimal, and when multiplied by the 1 milliamp current LSB, we get 20 amps of current as expected. The power register reads 9600 in decimal, and after multiplying by the 25 milliwatts of power LSB is equal to 240 watts of power. This is equal to our expected value of 20 amps times 12 volts. Since all values match our expectations, we conclude that we have successfully programmed the INA233 using our simple two-step process. Other TI power monitors can be programmed in a similar fashion. In this example, we multiplied the adjusted register values with their corresponding LSBs to get real-world readings of shunt voltage, bus voltage, current, and power. It would be equivalent when using the telemetry data conversion equation if provided in the datasheet. Let's take a minute to summarize what we've learned in this video. Taking advantage of TI's digital power monitors is a simple three-step process that can be called determine, program, and read. Specifically, 
These three steps are 1. Determine the system requirement. Find out what is the maximum expected current and which shunt resistor to use. 2. Calculate the current LSB and select the smallest whole integer that is larger than the calculated value. This provides the best compromise among resolution, accuracy, and ease of calculation. 3. Read the register values. Take into account bit shifting and byte order when applicable. Multiplying the register value with its LSB gives us the physical value that we are looking for. That concludes our video. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of the content. For more information and videos on current sense amplifiers, please visit ti.com/currentsense.